Hi there, and welcome to another edition of Random Road Cuts here in Southern Idaho on Idaho State Highway 46 between the towns of Buell and Wendell, right near the Snake River, just a bit north of the Snake River. And the road cut we're gonna look at behind me here is the one of interest. A little loud here with the big trucks coming by. And in all transparency, this is a road cut I've looked at before, but we're gonna approach it just like we normally do on random road cuts, systematically making observations, coming up with some interpretations and such. So if you're new to random road cuts, welcome aboard. We stop at road cuts, usually random, although in this case, not so much. And we just work through the observations and the deductions and the logic that are used to figure out exactly what the geologic history is, or at least come up with a plausible story. Um, so it's good to look at things from kind of the big picture view and then also think about what we know about the regional geology. So we've got this nice big road cut here. You can see the darker gray rocks coming down. Uh, and then there's a sharp contact right here with some more kind of brown rocks. And then just past the tree here, there's another layer in between those two that's a little bit lighter. So I think we have some nice diversity here to look at. Of course, we're here in the Snake River Plain, and in this part of the Snake River Plain, the dominant geologic episode that's taken place is one of volcanic eruptions and eruptions of lava, uh, more recent eruptions of basaltic lava and older eruptions of rhyolitic lava and ash when we had the Yellowstone hotspot in this region. So those are some things possibly on the table. We're also far enough west that you might start seeing a little bit of the sedimentary deposits from Lake Idaho, ancient Lake Idaho that existed here uh, between about 10 to 3 million years ago. So we can see the height of this outcrop, maybe, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe 50 feet or so, about whatever, 16, 17 meters, something like that. But let's go ahead and head over here and make some observations up close and see if we can figure out this outcrop a bit here. Thanks again for joining me using my new little camera. So I'm hopeful that uh, the quality turns out pretty good. So we've got this sharp contact here um, between these brown rocks and these gray rocks. Let's go ahead and get a little bit closer here up this steep slope as best we can. Okay, so, and in this lighting, it's pretty good. So let's start with these brown rocks. First of all, they're incredibly crumbly. This is just not held together very well at all. These rocks are just utterly falling apart uh, in front of us here. Um, the other thing we can see, and I hope this comes across in the video, you might see a few little sparklies in here. There are crystals in these rocks. These rocks do contain crystals, but again, just kind of a, a grungy looking rock, just not very obvious in terms of identifying it. Little spot here where things are a little bit more clear. We can see there's some holes in the rock along with some of these crystals. And so a lot of these holes appear to be rounded holes. And with the crystals we're seeing here, that would lead us to believe it's probably igneous. Um, it's, could be metamorphic, but not a lot of metamorphic rocks in this part of southern Idaho. So likely igneous, likely volcanic. And I think a lot of these little holes in here are most likely vesicles, gas bubbles that have actually um, formed in the rock. Let's see if we can zoom in here with the fancy camera, give you a little closer look there. Um, and again, there's some crystals in here, some little white crystals of what looks like plagioclase feldspar. But this real reddish material, you can also see there's areas in here where it's highly oxidized. There's a lot of iron oxidation that's taking place in the rock and it, a lot of this rusty brown color as well. So I think looking at this rock here, um, it is a basalt, but this is basalt that has been thoroughly altered um, and possibly weathered as well. So it's it's been altered possibly by hot water moving through it 
there's been maybe some hydrothermal alteration that makes it kind of look a little bit more grungy, or else it's just been highly weathered. There's just, this rock is not as pristine as it once was when it was uh, deposited. So that's the brown layer there. Uh, and if we look at the contact here, we can see it's a pretty sharp contact between the two. And the rock above is more gray to almost black in color. Um, also has a lot of these little holes or vesicles in it. And this very much looks like a more pristine and obviously younger sitting on top basalt. So this would be a much younger lava flow. Now we don't know in this case the age between these two, but you can see there's quite a bit of a change here in terms of the color, the competency of the rock, um, the alteration of the rock. So there seems to be a pretty good difference in time between these two. So let's work our way down the outcrop this way. I think we can actually get by up here on this shelf and get past this tree. Uh, there's places in here where there's some of these light colored zones in the darker rock. These could just be fractures where, uh, you know, when this was at the surface where water's percolated down and deposited some material there. And then right here, we're getting something new. Let me back up a little bit, make sure I catch this. So here we have the dark colored black basalt. And then below we have the lighter or the brown basalt. But right in here, we're picking up something really different. There's a bed in here. It's a little hard to see, so I'll move down where it's in the sun a little bit more. Um, of mostly sand, kind of like loose, sand, but we can see layering in here. We can see bedding. We can see this, the size of the particles are sort of in this pebble size, you know, BB, possibly almost marble size. And as we work our way across, a little hard to see with the, the shadow of the overhang here. So let me come over here a bit. Now we're starting to get larger particles in this layer. Um, and there, the layering seems to be pretty pervasive. Here's one here that's quite a bit larger. Um, you know, kind of flattened, but maybe approaching like golf ball size. And then let's get, let's follow this layer out. Yeah, over here we can see it better in the sun. There we go. So we've got the basalt up above, the younger basalt. Um, down at the bottom of the outcrop, we have the, the brown basalt. But then here we have, again, this, this sandy layer that's, you know, almost um, the span of my hand in terms of thickness. There's particles in here that are rounded. So you can see some of these flat, rounded particles in here, but mostly it's this coarse sand and it's quite, quite crumbly. It's not really consolidated very well. And as we move our way down a little bit here, we can see within this sand layer, um, some little kind of curves running through the layering here, the bedding. And these look like cross beds. So this is looking a lot like a stream deposit sitting just below this dark, younger basalt here. Let's work our way down just a little bit further. Um, there's a nice view of the whole thing with the dark brown basalt at the bottom. There's a different unit here. I think we've now picked up four units. The dark brown basalt, there's this kind of buff colored brown layer the more bedded um, sandy layer that we're focusing on right now, and then the dark colored basalt here. So you can hopefully see uh, some of these wispy, I know it's under the shadows there, there we go, the wispy little cross beds cutting through the sand here. Again, this stuff's very soft and easily um, kind of crumbles here. Excellent, so we've got evidence for two different volcanic eruptions as well as what appears to be some sort of sandy stream deposit, but also with some, some larger chunks as well. So there's some pebbles in here, uh, and we've seen particles as big as maybe a golf ball or so. Really nice exposure here. You can really see the cross beds here going in different directions. We've got a set of cross beds here running this way, 
and then they get truncated across the top there. Just real indicative of what we might see in a, a, a migrating back and forth across the landscape kind of stream or river deposit, what we call, would sometimes maybe call a point bar. And then we can actually get, it looks like if we keep moving along here, we get to a place where the sand, let's come down a little bit and get a bigger picture view. The sand actually kind of pinches out. Right here in front of us, the sand layer comes along and just pinches out right up into this contact in here. Um, might be a little bit more sand in there. And then it becomes a little bit more chaotic. Definitely you don't see any sand as you move into this section here. We've got the basalt here and then this tan unit sitting right on top of our dark older basalt. So very much looks like this road cut transects a stream channel, an ancient stream channel. These wispy cross beds and the shape of the sediment, those rounded pebbles we see in there are very much telltale signs of this being a stream deposit. Um, sitting on top, sitting below the stream deposit is this brown layer that's overall much more fine-grained. It lacks the bedding we've seen with some of the, with the, uh, with the stream deposit. So it doesn't have the layering. It does have big particles in it in places. And so this to me looks more like a soil horizon, just an ancient soil horizon, what we call a paleosol that's developed above the kind of grungy brown basalt. So this is a soil horizon that's developed. Uh, and then we go right into our, our well-layered sand uh, deposit from a stream. And then sitting right on top of that is the basalt. Now, if we look at the basalt closely here, there's some other interesting um, things that show up. If you look at some of the shapes in the basalt, you can see that they're kind of rounded at the bottom. Some of these are more oval uh, in shape, but it looks a little different down here than when I pan further up the cliff where it's a lot more cohesive, where the basalt's all gray, doesn't have as much of this brown component to it. And if we work our way down here, there's even this crazy looking thing here where you can see this lobe of basalt is actually pushed through. It's actually protruding out towards you right in the middle of this sand deposit. You can see the sand draped up over the top of it here, then comes down on the backside. You can also see some of the smooth ropey texture in the basalt here. But what's interesting about the basalt is it's covered in this brown material here. Now, what these are looking like, these rounded shapes, the brown alteration around the margins, there's a nice one right here. These are pillow basalts or pillow lavas. And these form when lava, basaltic lava, goes into a water body. So in this case, it appears very clear that we had some sort of stream or river system depositing those sands we were looking at. And then there was an eruption of lava. And that lava actually went downhill and went into the river or stream, into the stream bed and cooled quickly, forming these quenched, quenched margins. If you look at the edge of this piece of basalt here, you'll see that it's actually a little bit darker and glassy. There's actually a rind to the pillow lava itself. So we have real cl clear evidence here that the lava interacted with the stream, disrupted it. Here you're getting some of the sand and the pillow lavas a little bit more kind of chaotically mixed together. And then eventually, if you just keep moving along in the north direction here, we're out of the stream. And so here is where the basalt looks more or less normal, what we would call a subaerial basalt, a basalt that did not interact with water from top to bottom, bottom looking at the road cut. So there's just this, this area here, this little zone where we see um, 
the stream channel with the with the sands and then we also see the pillow lavas sitting right on top of or in some cases being injected into uh, those stream deposits with the those pillow lavas showing up just a really fantastic road cut um, and one I've, I've brought people here before so again this wasn't truly a random road cut for me but hopefully you've also been able to piece through some of the the story as well so again just in review we've got an older highly weathered highly altered basalt this kind of brown chocolate brown color very crumbly but still retains some of its original characteristics we saw the vesicles we could see the crystals that grades up into this uh, kind of white to buff colored layer here which is the soil horizon so a soil had developed on top of this highly weathered basalt and then we have this channel deposit which actually cuts into it you can actually see some of the the erosion as that channel deposit cuts down and into this outcrop and then we have a nice sharp line right here as we transition into the dark gray basalt which in many places here shows signs of being a pillow basalt where the lava was interacting with the water and you can maybe trace that up I don't know maybe a couple meters six feet or so and then it looks like it grades more into uh, typical basalt so that might be indicative of how deep the water was in this stream maybe two meters six feet or so of water before the lava fills in that channel and then just all this basalt tends to just stack up and kind of overwhelm it here uh, as we continue on looking at the rest of the basalt again kind of hard to see from way down low but it looks pretty uninterrupted I don't see any big breaks it's very likely this is all one sequence of flows from one eruptive event here in the Snake River Plain so pretty fantastic um, this little sequence here so that's our edition of random road cuts for this time along Idaho Highway 46 hope you've enjoyed exploring the geology here with me uh, again, if you'd like to contribute to the channel, there's a thanks button at the bottom right of the viewer. There's also some links under the video description. But we'll see you next time from an another road cut. Take care.